Fifi. No, no, look, darling. Look, what's over there? Look. Look, sweetheart. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> All right. Okay. I tried. I tried, you guys. <laughs> I tried to get my cat on the video. Okay. I'll just give you a couple of seconds. Who's all there? Rosa! Rosa's there! Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Did you see Fifi? Fifi was there. All right. <laughs> you know what it is, Rosa? It's not an outfit. It's just a scarf. I've just put a scarf on. I've got jeans on at the bottom. Look, I'm wearing jeans. Okay, right, so um, she didn't like me holding her. I, I wanted to get her on the camera. I can't believe I'm winded already. You guys, I need to lose weight. I've, I've gained so much weight. Anyway, I'm so sorry. This is on Facebook. Right. Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, I was going to actually do this video in my group, in my uh, my group with my friends on Facebook. But I thought, you know what, what I'll do is that I'll do it on my Facebook page. Because I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, you know, not just my friends in the group. <sighs> so, there was um, a couple of things I wanted to say. Okay. I made a little brainstorm. This is why it took me so long. I told my friends I would be on here like, I don't know, an hour ago or something. Anyway, I've got my earrings on, you guys. Look. <laughs> I've got my Christmas earrings on. I feel like a proper Pakistani today. Look. Like, this is how we usually dress up. Do you know that? If we're going to functions and stuff, it's all glitzy and glamorous. Anyway, what better day to dress up? Then the Lord's birthday. Now I know before you start saying all these crazy things about Saturnalia and Nimrod, let me just say a few things, okay, friends? <laughs> Christmas, bear in mind, I'm talking to you as a former Muslim, all right? I used to be a Muslim, okay? Christmas, if you think about it, it's a very personal thing, isn't it? very individual, very special for some people. I'm reminded of Christmas Eve 2001. I made a post earlier on my Facebook regarding what happened with me, with my own family on a Christmas Eve. I should probably send some invitations, huh? <laughs> Hold on a minute. I didn't think of that before. I just sent some invitations. Oh, I don't know who I'm inviting. I'm just fighting everybody, you know, because I don't want to be here talking on my own, do I? All right, there you go. That's enough for now, I think. Okay, so I'm back again. Sorry about that. Thank you for waiting. Yeah, I know they're lovely, aren't they? You can't see them because my hair keeps dropping. <clears throat> 2001. When my parents began to um, discover my faith in Jesus Christ, um, it was very much, um, it was drama. I had so much drama in my family, you guys. I kept my faith in Jesus a secret for many months before this. By the time the cat was out the bag, the heat was um was increasing you like the temperature was going up to cut a long story short when christmas was approaching my family my relatives i had so many people in my in my in my community if you like were really shocked disgusted they thought it was the worst thing that could happen to a pakistani muslim girl believing in jesus so come Christmas Eve, my mum had called the emergency doctor because of course she thought I was hearing voices, talking nonsense. She called the emergency doctor. This is all on Christmas Eve, you guys, 2001. And um, 
a few hours after this whole commotion that was going on in my family home, it was becoming more serious, if you like. My, my dad and my mum were just telling me very plain that what you have done is very, very bad. We can't accept you as a Muslim in our family because you have renounced Islam. You've rejected your family, you've rejected Islam. There's no other option for you than to leave. We can't accept you in this household anymore. You know, you don't understand the, the, the gravity of what you've done. So this kind of language was going on, this kind of stuff, and I wasn't really prepared, you guys. I wasn't prepared for it. Um, a few hours into Christmas morning, my mum, my hair, the earrings are pulling on my hair. My mum and my dad had come, like, come to me upstairs and they spoke to me. They said, you know what? I'm saying it in a nicer way, but they were very upset, very emotional, very hysterical, especially my mum. And she said that this is the worst thing that's happened. You have to leave. You believe in Jesus. This is not um, acceptable in Islam. You've already heard what the relatives are saying. They want you dead. This is um, deserving of punishment. That de <laughs> is deserving of death. Apostasy, you could say. Because I became a gufar, right? A gafir. But I wasn't prepared to leave my family home. So early, early hours on Christmas Day, I'm talking about three, four, five in the morning, after the Lord had spoken to me through the word of God, because I was so stuck, you guys, I was so, because I didn't want to leave, I didn't want to leave my family, you know, who wants to, you know, who wants to do that, you know, so, um, so Christmas Eve, I'm sorry, one moment, really sorry so Christmas Eve or Christmas Day you could say I didn't know what to do you guys I started to pack a suitcase and just like you know the Holy Spirit was always with me he never he never left me alone you know every you know everyone says oh I feel so alone I feel so lonely but do you know what really you we're never alone we might feel lonely, you know, when things get really heated up, but we're never alone, you guys. So anyway, I wasn't planning on saying all of this. I can't believe this. I was supposed to be a cheerful Christmas message, you guys. So um, I called a taxi. I called a taxi. And, and the taxi came, and I, I remember it was around 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And um, I was sneaking out of the house, you guys. And I wanted to so much just go in my mum and dad's bedroom. And I wanted to tell them, look, I've done nothing wrong, you guys. I've done nothing wrong. Can we work this out, you know? It's like I'm going through the motions and everything, going through the motions. And do you know what I did? I just remembered I stole my mum's cell phone, her mobile phone. I stole it because I didn't have a cell phone in those days, you guys. So I stole her phone because I'm thinking I'm going to need a cell phone, right? So I took it. I can't believe there was a taxi on Christmas Day. Christmas morning, you guys, in Britain. Usually they're off for the holidays. And then, um, and you know what, when I sat in the taxi, when I sat in the car, oh, my earrings, goodness gracious. <laughs> when I sat in the car, I realized then, I'm like, oh, it's Christmas morning. I was like, oh, it's Christmas. And I was sitting in the back of the car and I was like, Lord Jesus, happy birthday, Lord. I'm sorry, hold on one moment. So, um, 
I'm like in the car. And I kept looking over while I was, was looking over. So what I'm trying to say, what, I'm, what is it I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say this, you guys. When there are people out there who love the Lord Jesus, right? And they're celebrating Christmas. You know what's really hurtful? Is when our own brothers and sisters, for some reason or the other, are condemning us because they think we are worshipping Saturnalia. We are honouring Nimrod on this day. Do you know what? It's, it's so ridiculous, you guys, that you guys would say that. This day is very special to me. And a few years ago, I fell for this trap. I fell for this lie that oh, it's, it's all paganism. Christmas is pagan, you know. According to my family, my Muslim family, Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. The Muslim world doesn't consider Christmas as worshipping Nimrod or worshipping Saturnalia. This, you know, what is this, you guys? The whole world is very aware of what Christmas means. Look, think about it this way. When you go to buy Christmas greeting cards, right? You know, you get a Christmas card, you know, you want to... Or... You know, when you're giving out cards, do, have you ever found a Christmas card with Nimrod on it, celebrating the birth of Nimrod, or you know, Happy Holidays, Saturnalia? You know, it's this is silly, isn't it, you guys? We have to think like like Jesus said, to be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves, right? What would Satan want more than any other thing in this world? This one day, think about it, you guys. This one day, the whole world, more than any other time in the world, I'm talking about in unison, is thinking about Jesus. Think about the impact this is having on many people, millions and millions of people on this one day, you guys. We also have Resurrection Sunday, okay? But just put yourself in the position of many Muslims like how I used to be many years ago. There are many ex-Muslims in this world who are secretly worshipping Jesus Christ. And when it comes to Christmas, can you imagine what they're going through right now? They're not thinking of Nimrod. Saturnalia, is the, it's not even in their radar, you guys. It's ridiculous. Please, I urge my brothers and sisters who love the Lord Jesus, we're, we're all different, right? We're like, we're like the rainbow. We've all got different colors, different flavors, you know, but we worship him. It's Jesus Christ that is worshipped in churches around the world. Nobody's singing hymns to Nimrod. <laughs> Who's singing hymns to Nimrod, you guys? I'm yet to find a church that is doing that. I'm yet to find a Christmas card that's got Nimrod written on it. You know, it's silly, isn't it? This is why Jesus said to us, oh, you see my scarf is coming off. <laughs> this is why Jesus said to us to be like children, you know? Think about children, you guys. Oh, I swear this is getting on my nerves, this scarf. I can't dress like this every day. Chil <laughs> there goes my earring. Children are very innocent, you know. Children are very quick to gravitate towards love. And uh, <laughs> I'm unraveling it, you guys. Jesus says to be like children. He, want he wants childlike faith. And just think about it, you guys. His children are worshipping him on Christmas Day. How does the father feel when his children are being condemned, rebuked, scolded for worshipping Jesus Christ's birth? Okay, we know he wasn't born in December. Oh my goodness. We're not stupid. We know that. <laughs> You know, people think that we're uneducated, we're not informed. 
you know, I'm so sorry, but as a former Muslim, as an ex-Muslim, I know what it cost to follow Jesus Christ. On Christmas Day, my parents let me walk out the door. They just, they let me do it. Christmas Eve, can you imagine? Get out of this house because you worship Jesus. They were making these, um, they had these horrible remarks. I remember it was mostly my mum. My mum had made these horrible remarks about Jesus. And my dad would say, oh, Christmas Day, she's going to go in the church and ring bells. You know, it's so, so awful, isn't it? <laughs> Anyhow, I think that's overkill. But I want everyone to have a Merry Christmas, okay? Please enjoy it. Don't let anyone condemn you. You know, don't. This is, this is not the Father's heart. His, his heart is not like that, you know? Nobody is worshipping Nimrod, all right? Okay, what else do I want to say? This is the greatest miracle. Think about it. Jesus Christ, the Word of God, was made flesh and he dwelt among us. This is what we are commemorating, you guys. We're commemorating the birth of the Word of God, this whole amazing miracle that we can't even fully comprehend. But we've got this one day in the whole year to think about this huge miracle. Think about it, you guys. It's not just you and me. We're talking about people who do not give two hoots about Jesus Christ. But this day, they, have, they are forced to consider Jesus. <laughs> Christmas is everywhere, right? When it's um, December, when December... Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I just I want to keep this scarf on because it's really festival you know it's very cheerful oh, when Christmas comes or let's say December you've got the world you know all this um, what do you call it this the merchandising right they're in it for the money you know they're trying to make a quick buck we know that you know let the world do whatever they want to do. We cannot change the world like that. You know how we change the world? What Jesus said, your love for one another will convince the world of who he is. So when you and I are bashing one another, talking about the own body, can you imagine? Think about it this way. Can you imagine getting a sledgehammer? and smacking your own body, like smacking it like this, banging your own body. This is what the body of Christ is doing. We are bruising, battering one another. And we're meant to be in his kingdom as his bride. We know we're not becoming more holy, more set apart. No, we're not. All these people who think they're becoming set apart, you're doing more damage to the body of Christ, you guys. You're abusing the bride. So please consider what I'm saying to you today. Please consider it. Um, something about this day is very... People's emotions are very heightened at this time of the year. Isn't that true, you guys? There are many people out there who are very lonely. <clears throat> Think about the homeless for a start. The homeless, oh, this is ridiculous, isn't it? I should just take it off. The homeless, the elderly, think on, think about those people right now, how much they would love to be with other people. And yet, our own brothers and sisters in the church are saying no, lawlessness. Nobody's bowing down to a tree, worshiping a tree. Oh my goodness, I've never seen <laughs> Listen, in my Muslim family, when we were little children, my mum and dad were really good in that sense. They, they let us have a Christmas tree in our house, in our family home as Muslims. Because we were little children. Even they didn't want to ruin the children's Christmas, you guys. It's a beautiful time of the year. And we know commercialism, materialism has ruined it. Yes, we know that. But it doesn't steal away the joy that we have in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. 
right? So when we lose our strength, we're weak, aren't we? And who would like that the most? Satan, of course. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He's always accusing the saints day and night. It needs to stop you guys. I love you so much. I'm trying to relay this to you. You know, I was there where you are. If some of you think that's, you know, Christmas is all pagan. I was there, you guys. And I repented for doing that. You know, you, the people out there who are ruining my Christmas, you, you crush the spirit. You crush the joy that's in us. You know, we want to worship the Lord. Now, tonight, all I'm going to do, as you can hear in the background, I got hymns playing. <laughs> I've been listening to... Andrea Bocelli, his beautiful hymns, his um, Christmas carols. I'm going to continue to listen to that tonight and I'm going to sing to the Lord. It's just me on my own with my cat, Fifi. You know, why is anyone going to tell me this is paganism? <laughs> Who's going to tell me what I'm going to do is paganism? It's not paganism, you guys. Anyway, what else do I want to say? Let us pray for the persecuted church, you guys. The persecuted church, it's never ending, it's relentless. The enemy's relentless on the persecuted church. Please remember them in your prayers. Use that energy, because some of you are very um, zealous for opposing Christmas. Use that energy for good. Let it be used wisely. Speak out against this injustice that's taking place in the world, this cruelty that's being um, enforced upon the believers in Jesus Christ around the world. I'm talking about Korea, Africa, Asia, the Middle East. Think about these people. We might not be able to physically help them in the sense where we can give monetarily, visit them in person, like visit the prisoners. Guys, there are people being imprisoned for their faith in Jesus Christ. Think about them, pray for them. Um... Christmas Day is all about this beautiful depiction of the most powerful being in this whole world who created everything, right? Decided, because we made a mess of everything, became flesh. The Word of God became flesh and came down and dwelt among us. This is what we're worshipping. This is what we are commemorating, you guys. And the whole world is. Whether they call it happy holidays or, you know, annual gift giving day. Regardless, as long as Jesus Christ is being remembered. Nobody is calling on Nimrod, all right? No one's worshipping Nimrod. <laughs> it's stupid, isn't it? What do you think about it? It's so silly. Anyway, oh, it's just a misunderstanding, you guys. It's a huge misunderstanding. Satan is... He's very cunning. He's very cunning, right? But he's the, the children of the Lord, we are born of the Spirit. We're not born of the flesh. And all that is born of the Spirit overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith in Jesus Christ, the Word of God made flesh. Think about it. It's the most amazing miracle this world has ever known, even though majority of the world are in denial, they reject him, they're going to face him on that day when he returns. <laughs> and he's going to return as a conquering king. He's going to come with great wrath. So nobody can tell me on that day, we didn't know. Nobody told us. We didn't know. You know now, don't you, friends? You know now. <laughs> anyway. Jesus Christ is Lord, and to him be all the glory. It's only 7 p.m. here right now, so I'm going to enjoy my evening, and I'm going to praise God. I'm going to sing praises to the one who saved me, to the one who thought that, you know. You know, God says in the Word of God that God chooses the foolish the rejected, the despised things of this world to confound the wise. So he gets all the glory for it. 
Oh, I love blue jewels. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to sort my scarf out. I'm going to take it off after this. I love you so much. I thank you so much for being with me. Miss my cat. Phoebe. I've left the back door open so she can go in and out. Can you see there? Look. Did she like my Christmas tea, you guys? Look. I promise you I'm not bowing down to that palm tree over there. <laughs> I promise you. I'm not bowing down to the palm tree. <laughs> I'm not worshipping the palm tree. It sounds so stupid. Oh, Lord. I think I've finished now. I think that's it. <sighs> Thank you all for listening. Love you so much. We're looking forward to 2020, right? And I said 2020. Let's hope and pray that we all have a better vision, you guys. <laughs> and I pray that the vision that we have is to take out the speck that is in our eyes, not the plank that is in our brother's eyes. I pray we have that kind of vision. Because on a serious note, you guys, the bride of Christ needs to be prepared. We need to be prepared to welcome the king. You know, like earthly kings. Think about the queen in Great Britain. The coronation, you know, she has this entourage, you know, wherever she goes. Think about it. The king of heaven is coming, you guys. He's coming for us, his bride. We need to be ready. We need to be prepared. I forgive everyone that has said mean things out of, um, you know, zealousness. <clears throat> but your zealousness is just only, it's only misplaced, you guys. That's all it is. It's all right. We all do it. We've all done it, haven't we? We've all said meanful things to one another when we never meant to. We never meant, we never had that intention to hurt anyone. If Christ, the Holy Spirit, is truly living in us, the spirit of grace and supplication, what, what that does is that we end up interceding for one another, you know, and praying and, you know, all that good stuff that only we can do with the Lord's help. <laughs> I love you so much and Merry Christmas. I'm going to go now. I think I'm bored. I am alone, you guys. Does anybody have a question? Would anyone like to come on camera and join me? Merry Christmas, Christy. I'm going to be at my friend uh, Christy's house tomorrow. She's so precious. My friend Christy. Christy, I love you so much, hon. Christy. Hold on. My friend Christy is so amazing, you guys. She knows I'm on my own this Christmas and she's invited me over. I see her every every Thursdays. We have like this fellowship together. I love you to bits. I can't wait to see you all tomorrow and the kids. I love you. Anyway, let's go now because I'm making a mess of myself. You're all wonderful. You're absolutely amazing. All of you have a special gift that the Lord has um, given you. He's created you very unique, very specific. You have a specific calling, you guys. Whatever you are, please use that gift to give the Father glory. So when Jesus returns, he will know that the talent that he gave you was invested and invested in good ground. All right? Anyway, I love you all to bits. I'm going to say goodbye and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2020. <laughs> Don't forget the vision, you guys. <laughs>